Shalom, Ahab, Wa Baraka. Peace, love, and blessings. First and foremost, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Lama Chadash. Now I want to give double honors to Elder Apostle Tahar for going off on everybody and saying that even the people that aren't in his camp need to be bringing out the 100% truth in at least three classes a week. Okay. Well, you know what? I want to follow. I want to. I want to follow through with that too. So I'm going to do my best to bring out more classes. I was really inspired by what he told his camp members, which was good. I mean, it was just a great thing. So um, um, I'll have to um get the um um I forget the name of his I forget the name of his channel. So um, you can just go on GMS and there's a lot of camps, pretty much worldwide. So you can pretty much find a camp in there. But he was talking to the camps and I heard him too. So I feel if the most high let me hear that same message, then he was talking to me too. I don't need to be in your camp to hear a message from the most high. Baha Shem Yahawashai, Baha Shem Rabachadash. So anyway, without further ado, I want to do my... Um, this is my Wednesday class, even though it's Thursday, because I wanted to do this class yesterday, and then a bunch of, uh, a lot of stuff happened. And it made me real sad, because that's, the, the, I got pushed away from this, and so today I get to do it. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the um, book of um, First Corinthians. We're just going to, we're just going to read chapter 12 for today. That's all we're going to do. Just First Corinthians chapter 12. All right. Let's go ahead and start from the top. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I would not have you unacquainted with. I would not have you not know. Now, of course, so he's letting them know. I'm not going to let you be ignorant. I'm not going to let you be unacquainted with these spiritual gifts. You're going to have them, okay? Next verse, verse 2. Now, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols even as you were led. The word even is actually an old um, English word that means indeed. So indeed you were led by dumb idols. And what were your dumb idols? I mean you worship them to this day. You worship a goddess of fertility. I mean the first thing that pops in your mind is Easter and then the Statue of Liberty. Woo! And the whore that rides on the back of the But anyway, You've got Christianity, and you've got Islam. Let's just go with the main two. Just the main two for today. Islam, their symbol is a nasty, dirty rock that they kiss. And Christianity is the, um, is the, the wooden cross, of course. And I mean, that's literally, um, I think that's in Deuteronomy 28, right? That um, here it is, Deuteronomy 28:64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Indeed, even and deep wood and stone. So let's just go with those two main ones, Islam or Muslims and Christianity. Those are the two main dumb idols you were carried away by. Or even as you were led. You were led by them. You were carried away by them and then they were your leader. So you were a follower of a Muslim doctrine. You are the follower of a Christian doctrine. Where I, wherefore, verse 3, I give to you, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of Yahweh calleth Yahweh shy accursed. Timothy. So no one's going to call Yahweh shy doomed. <laughs> That's what it's saying. 
No man speaking by the spirit of Yahweh is going to call his son doomed or call his son damnable or call his son detestable. You're not going to call Yahweh shy a detestable person if you're coming with the power of the spirit. You're not going to say, oh, if he did any miracles, oh, come on, man. That would be witchcraft, man. Whatever. Let's keep going. And that no man can say that Yahweh Shai is the Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Why did they put ghost there? Let's see if they use ghost anywhere else other than right here in this in this in this in this um, chapter. Because we're talking about the spirit. It said, I'm gonna give you concerning spiritual gifts, and you are led by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So let's look it up. And what is... And to and I, I just I'm just letting you guys see that the, um, these are very basic definitions, yeah, diversity, difference, but individual differences or um, that's the diversity. We have like individual differences. So let's just go with that. So there's diversities. Of gifts. There's individual differences of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, you know, government. Okay? Definition of administration. Um, an organization, a company, government. Um, um, executive duties, but you know, let me go back. Like I said, government, um, organization, business, government, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You, you get it. So an administration is pretty much your business organization, which you're governed by. This is the administration you're with. There are differences in your business, in your organization, in your government, but the same Lord. Who's that? Yahawashai. Yahawah Bahashim Yahawashai. And there are diversities of operations, but the same Yahweh which worked them all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. To benefit or to advantage, to have an advantage. So you're getting a benefit and an advantage with the Spirit. That's what it's trying to tell you right here. There are, there are differences of operations, but the same Yahweh which worketh in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Okay? Verse 8. For the one is given by the Spirit of, by the Spirit, the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is is the is gonna always be the same. And no matter what we do, it's by the same spirit. Even though we've got elders, we've got apostles, we've got prophets, we've got teachers, we've got disciples, you've got speakers and you've got readers and you've got guys that just do it on their own so 
There's diversities in the administration, but the same spirit. Now, some of us have a lot of wisdom by the same spirit. Some of us have a lot of knowledge. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever watched um, the, um, I guess it would be the Watchmen for Israel. Um, the Nakam, or Adam Abbott, he, um, I'm telling you, man, that guy will call out 20 verses and not lose his place and break every single one down and stick to the point he was making. That's a lot of knowledge. That's a lot of knowledge. And that was given by the same spirit as wisdom. Now, there's other guys out there that are just wise beyond their days. But that one, I wanted to give you that example. Now, let's go to the next one. Verse 9. To another faith by the same spirit. To another the gift of healing by the same spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another um, diverse kinds of tongues. So you can speak different languages. To another, the interpretation of tongues. So this person can just go like, there's languages we can't even speak that this person can break down and like interpret it. Oh, I, I know how to do that. Yes, you take this and that. And so what these characters actually represent, and this character represents that. So now we can break this word down and interpret what they were trying to tell us in ancient times. It says it right here. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work worketh that one and the self-same spirit. Okay, so all these that all these worketh that one and self-same spirit, dividing to every man uh, severally, sever severally, as he will. So he's going to give all this to. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man servilely as he will. Servilely. One at a time. Each by itself. Apart from others. Independently. So to every man independently as he will. For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also Yahushai, he's part of it. That's right, he's part of that one body that we are part of. Verse 13, for by one spirit we by for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Hmm. Well, I already showed you. Well, maybe I didn't mention it. But uh, the reason why we were called Gentiles in the whole first place is because we stopped keeping the laws. We went off. We were carried away and led by dumb idols. Deuteronomy 28 and 64, the wood and the stone. So they were calling us Gentiles all the way back then for whatever false gods we were worshiping back then that wasn't Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahushai, or all, actually it would be who wasn't keeping the Torah, pretty much. They were getting called Gentiles. So they weren't worshiping Yahweh, they were worshiping false gods. And nowadays, everybody thinks that they're a Gentile. <laughs> but this book's only talking about one particular set of people, that set apart people, that royal priesthood, a peculiar people. So you really got to keep it in perspective when it's talking about Gentiles. And no, don't play semantics. You've got to know that this ain't talking about anybody but Israel. Let me get back to it. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, whether we have been made to drink unto one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. The body is not one member, 
It's many member. Yeah, I'm going to use GMS again as an example. They've got members all over the world. Okay, let's just let's just let's just keep it at that. Verse 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? In other words, just because you're not where you want to be in this body of Christ, don't mean you're not a part of this body of Christ. You just got to stay in your lane. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? 17. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If, we were, if, if, if the whole body was just all eyes, who's going to hear? How are we going to hear anything? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? If, if, if we were just all ears, how are you going to smell anything? But now have Yahweh set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. So, if the Most High made you an eye, then see. If he made you a hand, then hold something. Metaphorically speaking, of course. But anyway, let me keep going. But now hath Yahweh set members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. Verse 19, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now, are they many members, yet but one body? So... In the body of Christ, or we, we have many members. We all have different jobs. We're not all going to be able to do the same thing. So when you're uh, one of the prophets or the elders or the apostles or the teachers, you're going to bring out a class. It ain't going to be the way somebody else brings out a class. It's going to do it your way. I do my classes my way. I don't, I, you know, I don't care what other people think about me. I'm going to bring out 100% truth, and I'm going to go eat dinner. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring out my 100% truth, and my wife's cooking right now. I'm going to go eat me some dinner and watch more with my kids. But for right now, but now are they many members yet yeah, but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And as body, we have to work together is what it's saying. You can't just decide you don't need a part of the body. You need every part. Verse 22, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. So what does it mean to be feeble? Feeble, weak, not strong, without force, easily broken. So, um, if something seems to be feeble, here's a perfect example, your eyebrow. Your eyebrow is like feeble, it's, it's, uh, it's um, it, it's it's without force. It doesn't do anything, right? It's it's, it's weak. What what does your eyebrow do? Well, it has this crazy job actually. It keeps water from falling directly into your eye. So when you sweat, it goes around your eyebrow. That's how you start sweating profusely. Isn't that neat? It's like little rain gutters over your eyes to make sure that you don't get water. So it it might seem to be feeble, but it has a great job. It protects the eye, and the eye gets to keep seeing. So, let me keep going. Let 
Let me know. 23. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness for our comely parts have no need. All of our beautiful parts have no need. They all have a need, but being beautiful, it doesn't really do anything for you. But Yahweh hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which is lacked. What is lacked? To be disputed of, to uh, not have or possess, to be not in use. Back to the adverb. You're not really using it. it. It seems lacked, but here it is. It's an honorable part on your body. It keeps your eyes from getting water in them if you do so happen to sweat or if water does so happen to hit you in the face. So let me keep going. Let me keep going. Verse 25, that there should be no schism. Uh-oh, what's a schism? That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. What is a schism? There should be no break in the unity of the body. Let me read it again. And that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care of one another. That there should be no schism. That there should be no that there should be no break in the unity of the body. There should be no break in the unity of the body. But that the members should have the same care for one another. So we should stick together. Stick together. Why do you think they've been spending all this money, all this propaganda? all this publicity, all these years separating the so-called black, the so-called Mexican, and the so-called native nation, or American Indian, whatever you want to call it. Me, honestly. I'm a so-called Indian. I don't like being called Indian. So, Let me read it one more time. That there should be no break. That there should be no break in the unity of the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. So we shouldn't be going off on each other. We should be um, uplifting. And we shouldn't be going off on one another. There shouldn't be a break in the body. What should we be doing? Numbers. Come on now. Somebody. I wish I was going to be able to go live. I'll find it. Suffer not sin, but rebuke thy brother. Suffer not sin, but rebuke thy brother. What chapter and verse? Yeah, 19 and 17. That was right. Yeah, right here. That thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Let's go back to Corinthians. Now we can like, we have to read it again. I got time. This is why Tahar told us to do these classes. So we can get better at it. So anyway, double honors. Double honors for that. Because I like doing this. So anyway, back to where I was at. That um that there should that watch this. That there should be no break in the unity of the body but that the members should have the same care for one another. How do you care for one another? 
Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate. Don't break the unity. The unity is hatred. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy brother and not suffer sin upon him. Okay. Now, okay, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. And 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. You okay? Here's a good example of one member receiving honor and all the members rejoicing with it. Elder Apostle Gabar. Um, broke down Cornelius correctly and you know what back then they didn't accept it but today it's common knowledge that Cornelius is an Israelite how do we all mourn together how do we all how do we all mourn together as body when we see a brother fall out the truth when we see a brother our one of our good brothers that knew this word fall out of the truth we all mourn we all start rebuking we all go straight to Leviticus 19 and 17 thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him and then he's gone and we're all doing it together because it's a sorrowful thing to um to um to, for all the members to when, when let me read it again 26 and whether one member suffer all the members suffer so when we see somebody fall out of the truth it bothers all of us if you're not sincere in this truth then it shouldn't bother you at all I guess because you don't get it or one member be honored all the members rejoice with it double honors to elder apostle Gabar for breaking down Cornelius correctly all right, let's keep going. Verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in um, per, and, and members in particular. And Yahweh hath set some in his church. First apostles, elder apostle Gabar, elder apostle Tahar, the first are the apostles. First, secondary. Secondarily, prophets. Those are the, those are all the people that are under the, the elders right there. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Did I just say? You are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. What chapter and verse? First Peter's two and nine. First Peter chapter two and verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So let me read it again. Let me read it again. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Do all interpret? Baha Shimmy Hoshai Baha Shimmy Rahadah. 
Thank you and pledging, brothers and sisters, in the name of Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. There's tongues, there's breakdown. Yeah, we do that. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show unto you a more excellent way. So, once again, let me ask you again. Are we all teachers? Are we all um, prophets? Are we all workers of miracles? Are we all apostles? Well, let's see. First Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Yes. That ye that ye should if you are a royal generation, uh, you are I'm sorry, let me start again. Let me get excited. First Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So when you were carried away by the uh, the the dumb idols, you were in darkness. But when you came into the light is when he gave you to understand. When you started to understand this word and you got understanding, that's coming into the marvelous light. And then you start to learn things about this book and you start to learn the laws. Then you start to learn the statutes within the laws, then the commandments. And then you find out what? We have high holy days. What, they're weeks long? We're supposed to, this, oh man, this doesn't sound bad at all. Why were they hiding this from us? Yes. Yes. But covet earnestly the best gifts. We're a royal priesthood. What is the best gift? Um, let's go to... Um, Go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and. I'm, 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 I'm just gonna. I wanted to. I, I guess this is close. I can't see. see. This is why Tahar has us studying every day. This is why I need to bring out three classes a, a week. But um, um, what's the best gift? What's the best gift? For by grace. Oh, this is um. Set, this is Ephesians two and eight. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of Yahweh. Not of workers, lest any man should boast. So, the best gift is that he saved us. <laughs> he gave us that you're saved through faith. See, you can't, and the reason why I wanted to read 9 is, not of the works, lest any man should boast. So, if you could get into heaven because you did something first, or you broke down a scripture first, that's not getting you in. What's getting you in is that, that you have that faith that he sealed you with. You have to be sealed with this faith. I see so many people think that they have faith, and when I tell them what the Bible says, they want to hurt me. i got to physically get away from this guy. I cannot believe he said that. What do you want me to say? A lie? Then we have to go to Isaiah 39 and 10. I'm not really doing that right now. In fact, I'm gonna bring uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there. We're gonna close out with that. The best gift. What's the best gift? For by grace ye are saved through faith. That's being saved because he sealed you with his faith. You can't have faith without the most high Yahweh, Baha Shim, Yahweh Shai giving it to you, okay? So, for by faith ye are saved, for by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of Yahweh. So you couldn't give yourself faith. You couldn't save yourself. You can't do it. 
It has to be from Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And with that being said, I can do that one more verse. I can do that one more verse. Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And with that being said, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, I hope you were able to get something out of this message. And um, Shalom, Ahab, Wabara. Peace, love, and blessings. And all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Barachadash. Shalom.